Hi everybody, I'm Roy Firestone. This is our weekly show on Facebook and YouTube, February of 1964. A very important month, a very important year in music and really pop culture in general. That's the Beatles making their debut on The Ed Sullivan Show. Well, it's almost 60 years later. I've been a Beatles collector pretty much all the way since then. All kinds of magazines and photos and bobbleheads. And I decided today, a little offbeat thing, to show you my Beatles room, give you a little bit of a tour. So this is my collection that I've collected for almost 60 years. Watch. Well, as promised, here is my Beatles room. You can see some of the Beatles memorabilia as you walk into the room, but things get a lot more interesting as you pan around. Um, let's start with, first of all, some of the photographs that I've collected over the years. And again, forgive me for the, having some glare here. There's some light in the room. Uh, this is an early um, Beatles performance. This was in, I think, Manchester, England, around 63. On top of that, there they are again, performing a little bit later. I think this is at the Olympia in Paris in 60, just before they hit uh, the Sullivan Show. Also, early 64, maybe January or maybe December of 63. Uh, on top of that, you can see some of the Beatle memorabilia from the past. And this is, of course, fan magazine stuff. And the Beatles, of course, here. But here's some of the stuff that I'm really proud of. You see, look, look carefully at this. This is Paul McCartney singing yesterday on the Sullivan Show. What makes this photograph so interesting is it was photographed from behind the camera the night of that debut. The very first time McCartney sang yesterday, you can see George and John just sitting by there and same thing with Ringo and no one else was playing. And Ringo sing, uh, Paul singing on an acoustic guitar. This is also from the Sullivan Show. Again, please forgive the glare. Sorry about that. But this was an amazing moment. This was also taken from behind the camera. This was earlier than what you're looking at than the yesterday video. Here's a Robert Freeman piece of the Beatles talking about their set. Uh, circa, right, I guess, around, around 1962 or three, Ringo had just joined the group. And there they are in the Cavern Club uh, singing, uh, talking about themselves singing, and performing at the Cavern Club. Here they are, songwriting. These are both Robert Freeman originals. They're really gorgeous pieces. Um, here's an interesting piece. This was um, a collage that was produced using the articles about the Beatles over the years, and they turned it into a Beatle collage that really, I think, made out of cray paper, really one of the most interesting pieces I have. Uh, over here, we pan over here, you can see John Lennon. Again, I forgive the glare. Maybe if I turn the lights out, it might help a little bit. Not too much. But you see Lennon's signature on the Imagine album. And what's interesting here, if you look carefully, he signed it both underneath the plastic, if you remember they used to have plastic on album covers, and then when realized what, I, what he had done, he signed it on top of it too. So this is an original Imagine uh, signed album cover. Here's uh, Paul when he was in the Wings era performing. Um, have some Cavern memorabilia from the Beatles performing over the years. Of course, this was a, a piece that kids had when they wanted to have drinks and stuff at parties. That's a tray. But here's some real interesting stuff. This is a piece that uh, was given to me for my birthday, actually, and it commemorates Paul McCartney's great records uh, with the era, the era of Wings. It's a gold record, and there's some of the different albums. There's Red Rose Speedway, Band on the Run, um, Wings Wildlife, The Ram, the early Cherry album. But this is kind of one of my favorite pieces. Down here, you can see the Sgt. Pepper Lonely Hearts Club Band and the original um, poster for the Shea Stadium show. Now, of course, this is one of my favorite things of all, is when I met Paul McCartney in Liverpool. That was the night he talked to me about Jerry Maguire, and he said, you're not gonna make me cry, Roy. You know, and that was a cool moment. Uh, here's another promotional piece from Wingspan. McCartney signed that as well. So a lot of these pieces here, as you can see, mean a lot to me, and they have a lot of a special value. I have to have seven cameras in this room and surveillance virtually 24 seven video surveillance because this room is kind of special, obviously. And there's a lot of people who like some of these items. 
Uh, here's the night that I, perform, I, I, I went to see Paul perform uh, his Run Devil Run concert. And again, there's Paul. If you can see the picture way off in the distance, maybe you can get a little zoom in. See the peace sign? That's me. That was the night Paul performed in Liverpool. Uh, again, my friend Bill Porcelli helped me get that. That was an incredible experience. I like this stuff here too. But these are some of my Beatle collections of the collectibles. Some of these are various bobbleheads and porcelain figurines, yellow submarine, etc. Here's some early fan magazines. Here's the guitars that the Beatles made very famous, miniature versions, including the, uh, the very famous Hofner bass in the back, which just fell. <laughs> Uh, here's the Beatles doing their thing. Uh, that's a Christmas ornament, if you could believe that. But here's one of my favorite things. If you could see this, I'm going to take this out. This is a bottle of brewed beer called Old Stinkhorn. Can you see that? There's even a phallic symbol there going on. Paul McCartney himself brewed this beer in his house. He used to give these away as gifts. I never opened this bottle of beer, nor will I but it's one of my favorite collectible items. Um, as I said before, so many of these things, um, you know, some people can get them rather easily, some people cannot, and other, others are far, far more valuable. Here's some beetle glasses and stuff like that. But all things considered, I mean, this is my room that people most enjoy coming to see. I've been do, putting this together for the better part of, I don't know, 35 years or so, and I have, you know, I have pretty tight security here. A lot of security cameras and stuff. This is an interesting item. This is the original porcelain, excuse me, wood, wooden porcelain figurines for the Beatle cartoon show that used to be on ABC on Saturdays. I remember it was on at 10 o'clock in the morning. Here's uh, movie posters for Hard Day's Night. Of course, this one too. And uh, this is a beautiful piece that was uh, painted by Samantha Wendell. Uh, many years ago for me, really one of my favorite things. A lot of the fan stuff, as you can see up top here. But uh, here's one of my favorite pieces. I'm going to close it off right around here to show you. This is what was made for me when I did my Beatle piece, spoof piece, where I performed with the Beatles. There's me with John, with uh, George, and uh, me singing on the Ed Sullivan Show as a member of the Beatles. We did that electronically. Uh, Tom Adelsbach was the editor. It was a great piece. It's something I'm very proud of. Here's a bunch of guitars, including the Beatles' Yellow Submarine guitar and the Hofner bass yet again. And of course, here's a guitar that was signed by my friend Todd Rundgren. Uh, he's the, this is the only piece, it says, A Dream Goes On Forever from Todd. And it's the only piece that's not a Beatles piece on this, in this room, but it's still kind of fun nonetheless. Um, lots and lots of pieces here. This is from Working Classical. Paul signed this one as well right there. And then Ringo signed this one up here. I love this piece. It's Ringo sitting on the drum stand just thinking about the gig. So we've had a lot of fun doing this over the years. You can see so many of these pieces you know, have meant a lot to me. And I, you know, I've been able to be very fortunate in, in gathering up a lot of this stuff. And I have other stuff all over the house. But as I said, I kind of try to be careful with it because I don't want people to, this is kind of a spoof piece of me interviewing the Beatles, which I never did. Uh, and this one too, me talking to the Beatles, which never happened. But you know, as I said before, I love it. I love the Beatles. Beatles live forever for me as they do probably for you. And this is just a collection of some of the things I have in my Beatles room. Thanks for watching. That is my Beatles room. Every time someone comes to my house, that's the first place they hear about, the first place they want to visit. Thought I'd give you a little tour of that. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next week.